dedicated to the strength of the nation. Proudly we hail. Yes, proudly we hail, starring Arlene Dahl in Deep in the Heart, United States Army and United States Air Force presentation. Now here is our producer, the well-known Hollywood showman, C.P. McGregor. Thank you, thank you, and greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to your theater of stars, where Hollywood's finest motion picture talent joins us in plays we know you'll enjoy. Our star is that sensational young actress, Arlene Dahl, and the title of our romantic comedy, Deep in the Heart. This is the story of a girl who wanted to become an actress in Hollywood and found that her greatest scene was played at a hamburger stand. We'll have the curtain for Act One in a moment, but first, here's Wendell Niles with an important message. We Americans are proud of the United States Army and the United States Air Force, and we have good reason to feel that way. Regular Army men and United States airmen are among the finest in the country. They are symbols of freedom and democracy. They are helping to keep America secure and at peace. Above all, these young men in these proud uniforms are representatives of the people of the United States and our desire to lead a happy and peaceful life. Give them the respect and the support they deserve. And now, once again, our producer. The curtain rises on Act One of Deep in the Heart, starring Arlene Dahl as Winnie Lou. <laughs> Texas sun barbecues the prairie, and the little cow town shimmers in a haze of heat. On the depot platform, a lanky Texan leans against the baggage truck, his arm around a pretty girl, who keeps looking at her wristwatch. The train pulls in and stands there panting, and the girl knows the time has come. Well, goodbye, Tex. Take care of yourself. Think about me now and then. Probably won't think about nothing else. Winnie Lou, I wish you wasn't so darn mule-headed. I'm not mule-headed. Told you a hundred times that I have to go. I can't help it. Oh, you could, too. Hollywood, moving pictures. Honey, you just going out there and starve to death, that's all. I won't starve to death. I'll go out there and amount to something. Everybody ought to be the most they can be. Instead they're just laying down. Better than going out there and laying an egg. <laughs> Show you. For goodness sake, I can do it. Look at me. Look all right, don't I? Oh, you look all right to me. You look beautiful to me. Well? But then I ain't particular. Oh, I'll show you. If it's the last thing I ever do, five years from today, I'll be somebody. Huh, and where you be? Five years from today, I'll be just fine. Texas will take care of me. You'll be right where you are now, running your old ranch, and I'll be... You'll be way on your way from not eating regular. I'd just like to see you five years from today. You just made yourself a deal. What? Five years from today, I'll come see you. You will? Huh, that suits me fine. You see. Bye, honey. Be seeing you in five years. You can come to the front door. I'll tell my butler to let you in. Bye. When and Lou, there she goes. Sweet, darling, beautiful, mule-headed little heifer. And ever so often for the last five years, Winnie Lou has had a letter from Tex Tucker. Now it is only one more day until they keep their long promised date. And now in Hollywood, another great motion picture is about to be born. It's the last day of shooting, and a famous screen star is resting in her portable dressing room on the huge sound stage as the crew lights the set. She and her friend are talking. Five years, Gloria. That's what it's been. Half a decade. And every single letter I've had in all that time, he said the same thing. Just didn't think you had it in you, hmm? Never crossed his mind that I'd get anywhere. Well, of course, I've never known you as anything except Dawn Shelton. What is your real name? Oh, why did you have to ask me that? What is it? A little peach. I was christened Winnie Lou. Winnie Lou Hooten. Isn't that just sweet? Well, I do like Dawn Shelton better. Do you think you'll really keep the date? Oh, I'm sure he will. He's mentioned it in his last five, <laughs> last half dozen letters. He'll be there. 
I'd give anything to be there, too, but I have to be in Palm Springs. Uh, now, have we arranged everything? Well, if I could think of anything else to ask you to do, I would. Miss Shelton, uh, could we see you on the set, please? Uh, coming right up. Here I go. Back to work. Oh, thanks, honey. Get me. Tomorrow at four. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Hello, Winnie Lou. Winnie. Oh, Tex, how are you? Wonderful, honey, just wonderful. That girl, I sure am glad to hear your voice. Doggone if I ain't. Well, I'm glad to hear yours, too. Dead burn your... What am I saying? Well, it is nice to hear from you. When did you arrive? Huh? Of course. We had some sort of engagement tomorrow, didn't we? Oh, isn't that just... Too bourgeois. What? Matter of fact, I'm giving a little cocktail party tomorrow at four. Perhaps you could stop in then. Yes, do that. At least I'll steal a moment for you. After all, les vieilles connaissances sont les malheurs nécessaires, aren't they? When it low. Hmm? Have you had your tonsils out or something? Oh, oh, I'm sorry. You don't understand French. Of course you don't. You're still fighting English. Well, shall we say tomorrow at four, then? Oh, sugar, can't I see you before then? That would be quite impossible. You wouldn't understand the demands that... No. To four o'clock. All right. See you then. Oh, and Tex. Yeah? Uh, how long are you going to be in town? Another week. Been here one week already waiting for tomorrow to come. Why? Well, things here are a lot more expensive than they are back home in Texas. And I was wondering, shall I send a taxi for you? Honey, what you talking about? Well, that little ranch of yours, the way you have to work, with your hands. So I thought... Baby, you don't know. I don't? Uh-uh. Oil blowed in all over my ranch. I got me 27 oil wells. Why, Mr. Tucker, delighted to see you, delighted. Oh, are you? You're my very favorite customer, you know. Well, uh, does everything be ready tomorrow morning like we're playing? Everything, Mr. Tucker. The boots, the suits, the multicolored shirts. And, and Mr. Tucker, uh -huh. I took the liberty of having double monograms on the shorts that you're having made up. Was I right? Oh, son, you're right as a fox on a cloudy morning. I love them. Uh, are them presents I picked out being delivered every morning like I asked you? Oh, yes, indeed. Every morning at 8 o'clock sharp, you deliver a present to me, sir. Um, uh... Houghton. When and Lou who? Well, um, we've sent one of your choices every morning since you arrived in town. Musical cigarette box, archery set, the large wardrobe trunk, the bowling ball and bag, uh, the crystal bottles. And uh, did you put that stuff that smells so sweet in them? Reluctantly, yes. Uh, and just today we sent the ship's clock with barometer attachment. Well, good. I sent her some flowers on Sunday. Pretty darn thing. All made up to look like a big horse. Oh, she must have been delighted. I hope so. Of course, she don't know who's sending all these things yet. She's probably just amazed at each one of them. She probably is all right, all right. But uh, uh, I don't seem to recognize the name, Mr. Tucker. Hootin, Winnie, Lou, Hootin. Is it possible? Oh, of course you don't. Ain't nobody never heard of. But the address, I'm almost certain that's the home of some famous picture star. But I can't quite think who's... Well, there. I got that all figured out. She probably works there cooking and washing dishes or something. <laughs> Poor kid. She sure did try to put on a dog. Asked me to a cocktail party. Likely just a few folks, old tarred bottle of ginger ale sandwiches and stuff like that. I see. Well, sir, I'm going to bust in there tomorrow and I'm going to show her. Well, you'll certainly be dressed for the occasion. Yes, sir. Get me tomorrow at four. Help me, please. Yes, of course I can, Miss Shelton. I'd better start dressing for the party. Yes, ma'am. I just can't make up my mind which gown to wear. There's simply too many in that closet to choose from. What about one of these uh, Hattie Carnegie outfits? Say, this one. And you could wear the rubies with it. You'd be gorgeous. Mm, no. No, I'm afraid that'd be overdressing a little for a cocktail party. That ruby ring. The bracelet and pins. All diamonds and rubies. No, I don't think so. Oh, I wish I had problems like that. Mm, I love them, too. No, I'll tell you. I think I'd like to wear that that black dress with the clips and rings. I see what you mean. Simple and elegant. Yes, that's it. And now, Marie, if you just lay off the black dress, the clips and the rings, the sheerest lingerie, I'll be out of my perfume bath shortly, and you may dress me. <laughs> Oh, 
Who is it? Me, Mr. Tucker, bellboy. Got another load of stuff for you. Oh, yes, ma'am. Boy, you loaded down, ain't you? J just put that stuff on the bed in there. Yes, sir, I'll put it on the bed in there. He mocking me. Well, that ought to fix him up for the whole week. Here you go. Dad Burns, thank you, Mr. Tucker. Feller, no use in down home. Oh, you from Texas? Lano County. Son of a gun. I know the Williams is that. Oh, I got to finish dressing. It's getting late. You're dressing up pretty fancy, ain't you, Mr. Tucker? Yeah, got me a date. Cocktail party. How you think I'm gonna look in this year fall dress suit? Pretty. Awful pretty. You smell pretty, too. Well, I want to smell pretty this time. Mind holding my coat for me? Oh, no, sir. I'll hold your coat. Uh, Mr. Tucker. Huh? You better get yourself another shirt. This one's tore. Tore? Yes, sir. It's tore clean up the back. Oh, son, you ain't never got out of West Texas. This shirt ain't tore. She's made that away. Says which? Sure it is. See them little pearl buttons? She buttons up the back. Well, I am a suck egg mule. <laughs> well, the you... world sure is going to pieces, ain't it? Didn't never think I'd see a fella from Texas wearing blouses. Blouses, by darn, with little old pearl buttons on them, just like the gals wear. Have I got to go home and worry about you? Oh, don't give me no soul talk, son, I know. Where's pink ink, ain't it? Whee! Clear up. This here's an important date. I got to kick me a woman in the face. Well, that's reasonable, but... Huh? Oh, not sure enough. But I want to do things right. I called up and asked the place where I buy stuff at. What was the dressiest darn outfit they sold me, and they told me. Full dress, I said. Full dress with tails on your coat and sparkling studs on your shirt. Now, now here, now, hold my coat. Yes, sir. There. Now, let me see. It is a pretty darn thing once you get it on. Look in the looking glass. Just like in moving pictures. Yeah. Hey, oh, what time is it? After three. Well, where's my hat? Oh, right here. I'll see you wearing a man's hat anyhow. Yeah, he sold me a thing I wouldn't wear to a cat fight. This year's a $40 Stetson. Everybody knows that there ain't no better hat than that. Oh, sure. There, now, how do I look? Fine. Th them boots is pretty, but they ain't no good. Pat and Leather had them made to go with this year outfit. Well, here it goes. You want me to get you a taxi cab, Mr. Tucker? Why, of course not. Like I said, I want to do things right. I hired me a saddle horse all over, silver and leather. Gonna get on and ride. Ride right down Hollywood Boulevard to the waiting arms of poor little Winnie Lou. <laughs> briefly from our story, Deep in the Heart, starring Arlene Dahl, to bring you an important message from our government. Veterans of the Army, Navy, the Air Force, Marine Corps, and the Coast Guard, as well as men in uniform, here's big news for you. The Department of the Army has recently announced a brand new way for you to become a second lieutenant immediately if you can meet the following requirements. You must be between the ages of 19 and 32, have two years or more of college, have had at least one year of honorable service in the armed forces, and be physically fit. If you meet these qualifications, you can apply immediately for a second lieutenant's commission in the organized reserve and receive two years' immediate active duty. Don't overlook this outstanding opportunity to become a leader in the world's finest army. This is your chance to get in on the ground floor in a satisfying and respected career. And don't forget, this is a brand new offer. Go to your local U.S. Army and U.S. Air Force recruiting station where you'll receive complete details. The curtain rises on Act Two of Deep in the Heart, starring Arlene Dahl as Winnie Lou Hooten. When Winnie Lou took off for Hollywood, Tex Tucker bet she'd starve. She bet in five years she'd be famous. The five years are up, and Tex has come to Hollywood to see how Winnie Lou has fared. As Cowtown Tex, a thing of splendor in his full dress suit, rides up to Winnie Lou's front door, he doesn't dream that she is known in pictures as Dawn Shelton. He rings the doorbell, Wait till she gets a load of me hot dog. Good afternoon. Good heavens. Was there something the matter? Am I in the wrong place? Well, I feel you must be. Who did you wish to see, please? I'm looking for a gal named Winnie Lou Hooten. You know her? Probably works here. Oh. Oh, I, uh, would you wait just, please, right there? And maybe it's a joke. Hmm. Black dress, a lace or apron, and a nurse's cap. Seriously, Shelton, he's out there now. Never mind, we're talking. Well, well Tex, Hello. What are you doing in that out... out there? Well, I... I... <clears throat> well, won't you come in, Tex? You, you mean come on in there? Oh, yes, of course. 
Sure your boss won't care. Maybe, maybe for What are you mumbling about? Well, what if he is to come on in and, and... Dex, what's the matter with you? I don't know. Just looking at you again. In all the world, there ain't nothing as beautiful as you are. Oh, thank you. To me, that is. Oh, to you. Of course, I'm prejudiced. Ain't nobody could see what I see in you. Oh, they couldn't. That's natural, honey. Mm. To the he-rattlesnake, there ain't nothing in all nature so beautiful as a she-rattlesnake. Well... Oh, there you are, Marie. Will you take Mr. Tucker's hat? Yes, Miss Shelton. Here you are, honey. Well, Lou, you mean the maid takes... Hey, what did she call you, Shelton? That's my name, Tex. My professional name. Well, hey, is this your house? Who's do you suppose it is? Well, holy cow. I'll probably take a larger one next summer. The swimming pool is only 200 by 100 feet. I'll need a larger stable for my horses, and there's only 13 baths in the place. Cramped, you know. Oh, yeah, cramped. I only have six servants here, and that's not... Oh, good. that's not enough. No, that ain't enough. You ought to have some more. Well, I think so. How are things on the Lone Prairie? Rather dull, aren't they? Well, I ain't cramped. It's 18 miles from the front porch to my front gate. Ain't no stables could hold my horses. I use a tank big in your swim and hold to water cattle. Well, I suppose that's nice, if one wishes to water cattle. Now, shall we go in and meet my friends? Well... Right through here. <laughs> All right, break it up. <laughs> I want you lovely people to know Mr. Tucker, whom I've known for years. He'll tell you I'm stubborn, stupid, and a complete failure. <laughs> and he will tell you that he owns most of Texas. This is my secretary, Miss Young. Howdy, Miss Young. How do you do? My agent, Mr. Zeller. How are you? How do you? Didn't you have time to take off your makeup? This is my business manager, Mr. Shaw. Hiya, Mr. Shaw. <laughs> Remind me to get the name of your tailor. <laughs> this is my publicity man, Mr. Newell. Well, howdy. I'd like to see you later, Tucker. You look like a story to me. Oh, I do. Oh, that reminds me. I've got a story for you, Al. It's really funny. Well, good. Tell me. Well, some schmo has been sending me presents. No name, nothing. The most amazing thing. What? First came a little box. I opened it, and it tinkled out of tune. Nobody's darling but my own. <laughs> oh, oh and, and then I was bombarded with athletic equipment oh. and a trunk and a bowling ball that keeps following me down the stairs. <laughs> a, a thing with a barometer. A flowers? Well, flowers. Are, are they? Good. These were made up like a big horseshoe, and it said good luck. In daisies, yes. In daisies? <laughs> <laughs> oh, and you know what else? Oh, not anything more. Yes, bottles. Pretty bottles. Well? And they were filled with shaving lotion. Oh, priceless, absolutely priceless. No idea who sent them, huh? No, I really can't imagine. Well, I'll dream up somebody. Some complete dope, of course. Thanks, it's a beautiful story. Isn't that one for the book, Tucker? Yeah. Yeah, that's one for the book. Oh, there's Count Mavano. How nice to see you. Oh, uh, Mrs. Shelton, you are music on the still water. Mm. You are a flower, mm. a symphony, a poem. I kiss your hand. Ah. Uh -huh. uh. Well, I'm a fence-jumping jerk. Mavano, you are a delight. I believe you know everyone. Oh, except Mr. Tucker. Hi, partner. What? Count Mavano is my fencing master, Ted. Oh, well, fencing, huh? Now, that's interesting. Oh, is it that you fence, Mr. Tucker? Oh, sure. Used to fence my foreman. Feller called Slim. We could dig more post holes and throw up more bob wire than any two fellers. Uh, uh, what's the matter? <laughs> the Count fences with foils, Ted. Oh, it does, huh? Foils. Yes, with foils. You understand now, or do you? You don't fall, honey, or do I? Fall? Yeah, don't fall, because you're riding an awful high hole. <laughs> this is where we're going tonight, huh? Yes, Romanos. The chef here is famous. I'm hoping you'll be available for my next dinner party. wonder if you'd like to come to Texas for one of my barbecues. I doubt that. You know, it's absurd, but sometimes, just occasionally, I miss Texas. Are you enjoying the ballet, Tex? I'd rather have a hamburger. Uh, aren't they graceful? Graceful? Did you say June Bug? That ballerina looks like a fairy queen floating in starter. Well, if she's dancing with looks like he's a jack of clubs with a hangover. Strange that you can't see what I see out here. And I can see what you mean about Texas. <laughs> Well, goodbye, Wendell Lou. You're going? Going back to Texas? Yeah, leave in an hour. Mm. Get your reservations, all right? Oh, sure. Got me a drawing room with all the fixings. That there special fair deluxe train, you know. Mm. Are you ever coming back? No. Not ever? No. Not, not even years from now? No. Well, 
Goodbye. I'm glad you have everything you want. Yeah, I'm just lucky, I guess. Glad you got everything, too. Well, goodbye. Goodbye, Dick. And if you... If I could ever... Goodbye, one you. <laughs> Oh, I sure do appreciate this lift. Okay, I used to do a little hitchhiking myself. Where you heading? Just coming home, Deep Smith County, Texas. Deep Smith, huh? Where you been? Hollywood. California? Quite a ways. Couldn't manage a railroad ticket, huh? No, sir. I lit in Hollywood with nearly $3,000 and I left with $4.40. Oh. Girl, of course. Yes, sir. Girl. But I showed her. Yeah. <laughs> uh, showed her, did Well, here we are, as far as I go in your direction. Well, this is fine. I can get me a hamburger in there. Thank you a lot. You're welcome. Uh, next time you get $3,000, you better buy some hogs. You think I won't? Bye. Goodbye. <laughs> Well, now, let me see. Howdy. What you gonna have to eat? Say that again. Well, I just asked you what you gonna have to eat. Don't you listen at me? I'd just like to hear you talk. Why do you? You sound like Texas. Now I know I'm home. Texas? You mean... Why well, I haven't got an accent. <laughs> I ain't neither. Give me a hamburger. With onion? With everything. One hamburger, Joe. Don't overlook nothing. One hamburger. Coming up. Here's your water. Napkin. Uh-oh, another customer, excuse me. What can I do for you? A hamburger, please. Yes, sir. With onion? No, just a hamburger. One hamburger, Joe, without nothing. Hamburger, two coming up, one with onion, one without. Wendy, Lou, honey, darling, it's you. Uh-oh. Joe, both them hamburgers without no onion. What are you doing here? Having a hamburger? What you doing here? What? Having a hamburger. Well, I don't get it. That old jalopy you drove up in a hamburger. Honey, what's happened? Nothing. Nothing's happened. That's just it. What? what? Nothing happened since I left Texas over five years ago. Oh, don't you see? No, I don't. Well, Texas, I was a failure in Hollywood. I down here did starve. Finally, I got a job, sort of, as a stand-in for a star, Gloria Marshall. She turned out to be the best friend I ever had. I told her about you. I always said I'd be a failure. So we set out to impress you with her home, her clothes, her servants, everything. Well, but, but all them people, your agent, your manager, and that count. Friends, Tex. Extras for the most. Dress extras. Stand-ins like me. Well, I'll be darned. And then after you left, it seemed so, so absurd, the whole thing. I, I miss Texas. I told you that a dozen times, but you never heard me. You mean you was coming back to me? I was not. You with your darn oil wells. I'm not going to stay away for years and then come running back when I know you're successful. Enough. Baby, hmm? you want to know something? Uh-huh. I ain't got no way with you. Everything's just like when you left. I was going to tell you about it later, but when you got so highfalutin, why, I decided to be a big shot, too, and I was just, just showing you. Oh, no. Oh, honey, now don't cry. Everything's all right now. You're so wonderful and so beautiful. Oh, and do I smell nice, too? Oh, do you? Honey, what is it? Perfume. Very special. I, I wear it for sentimental reasons. It's shaving lotion. Oh, oh, that's wonderful. Hey, Sue, pick up these hamburgers. They're getting cold. That's all right, Joe. These folks are generating their own heat. <laughs> Curtain falls in the final act of Deep in the Heart. Our star, Arlene Dahl, will return for a curtain call after this timely message from Wendell Niles. Men, only the best can be aviation cadets. And if you are between the ages of 20 and 26 and one half, with two years of college or the ability to pass an equivalent examination and physically fit, you're in line for a future unlimited. With those basic qualifications, you can apply for cadet pilot training, and only the best can be aviation cadets. As an aviation cadet, you will receive a year of the finest aviation training in the world. When you have completed your course successfully, you will be a full-fledged pilot, a second lieutenant in the Air Force Reserve, and placed on active duty immediately with beginning pay up to $336 per month. 
If you are an outstanding graduate, you'll receive a regular commission immediately. Otherwise, you still have good opportunity to qualify for a regular commission while on active duty. But either way, your future is unlimited. To find out if you qualify, inquire at your nearest U.S. Army Air Force base or recruiting station at once. Remember, only the best can be aviation cadets. And now, once again at the microphone, our star, Arlene Dahl, and our producer. Arlene, I suppose you know we put in a special request to the Hollywood Coordinating Committee for you to star in this play. Mr. Landy mentioned it, C.P., and I'm truly honored. I think the real honor is the Hedda Hopper prediction for 1949. Among all the young actresses, she picked you for superstardom this year. I think our listeners will agree with Hedda. <laughs> My, all these nice things, what can I say? Nothing, just keep up the good work. Incidentally, what brought you to Hollywood? Well, Warner Brothers signed me from New York to do my Wild Irish Rose. Then last year, I joined MGM. I remember Southern Yankee that you did with Red Skelton. Then I was loaned out to Walter Wanger to make a Reign of Terror opposite Robert Cummings. Oh, it's just been released, a uh, drama, isn't it? Yes. I thought you preferred comedy and drama, and that's why we had the story for you. Well, I really prefer a musical, just for the record. <laughs> and we had to go and give you a comedy. Fine casting. Oh, really, I loved it. And I particularly like Bart Yarbrough's story. He did a fine job, didn't he? And this story is sold to Bob Frost for a picture. No, really? Well, I guess he was too busy playing text to tell me. <laughs> I think it's grand, though. It certainly is. And by the way, now that you are back at Metro, what's planned for your next picture? Well, I think it's going to be a musical, and with Gene Keller. Isn't that fine? <laughs> Wonderful. More proof that Hedda Hopper's prediction is coming true. Yes, it is fine, Arlene. And I wish you a lot of luck. <laughs> Thank you. But believe me, I've got my fingers crossed. What's next here with you? Next week, Arlene, and ladies and gentlemen, Turhan Bay will star in the light romantic play, The Magnificent Rogue. This is the story of a violinist in Paris who played like Heifetz, Auer, and Chrysler, and whose recital came to an abrupt end when it was discovered that he was delinquent in his union dues to the plumber's loco. Sounds grand. And as usual, I'll be listening. Goodbye, C.P., and thank you. Goodbye, Arlene. <laughs> be sure to join us next week, ladies and gentlemen, when we bring you Turhan Bay in the Magnificent Rogue. Until then, thanks for listening, and cheerio from Hollywood. <laughs> Arlene Dahl appeared through the courtesy of the Hollywood Coordinating Committee, which arranges for the appearance of all stars in this program. The script is by Barton Yarborough, with music under the direction of Eddie Scrivan. This program is transcribed in Hollywood for release at this time. Wendell Niles speaking.